Hi everyone, it is May 18, 2019. The Weather Channel now has a live broadcast of the severe weather that is taking place right now. Severe weather outbreaks still happening. Tornadoes, lots of tornadoes happening. Let's listen to just a few minutes. The storm reportedly took out some trees and power lines, but thankfully no injuries were reported. And uh, it would be great if that's all we had to deal with over the next couple of days here, but that might not be the case. In fact, even this morning, reports of damage in West Texas, uh, uh, Abilene and uh, area from possible tornadoes moving on through this morning. Welcome back to Weekend Recharge. I'm meteorologist Paul Goodo live in Dallas, Texas. And Dallas, one of many cities here in Texas and uh, uh, neighboring states under a tornado watch. In fact, we have 600 miles of tornado watches have been issued, stretching uh, from Waco through Fort Worth and Dallas into Oklahoma City, uh, actually Oklahoma, into Tulsa, uh, into uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, to Springfield, Missouri, to Chanute, Kansas. All this area here in red under a tornado watch, meaning we are seeing and can continue to see strong and severe thunderstorms that can quickly produce tornadoes as it goes in through five o'clock this afternoon but that threat will probably continue into tonight and then pick up again tomorrow and also into Monday and Tuesday so a multi-day severe threat underway how about I just let this play and show you what is happening on college uh, DuPage radar show you what is happening on radar what meteorologists are not showing you or talking about what is happening on radar right now and we have storms out there right now let's bring in jackie jarris back in the studio and jackie i know parts of oklahoma eastern oklahoma dealing with some severe thunderstorm warnings as well as even a tornado warning still ongoing for the tulsa area yes we're going to get to all that in just a second paul but we're breaking right now we've got uh, some live video that's coming in of the drone uh, uh in texas i guess we're going to get to that in just a second so let me get through these warnings here we're watching this whole complex we've got warnings that are active now from kansas through oklahoma and down into Texas. So here's the live video now uh, in Bollinger, Texas, where a tornado touched down and caused uh, extensive damage. This is Charles Peak, our storm tracker, and he followed this tornado in and witnessed the damage uh, himself. And now he's got his drone up and is overlooking some of these structures. And wow, that whole thing, I mean, that is just leveled. It's hard to tell uh, how well constructed perhaps that building or that home was, uh, but that pretty much uh, wiped the whole place out. You can see the debris uh, that's been strewn across the re area. Look at that. There's stuff in the trees up there. We've got uh, poles down. We've got trees that have been snapped in half. Um, so All right. I just want to point out, when did you ever hear a newscaster talk about how well a home was constructed when it was destroyed by a tornado? <clears throat> Well, I don't recall it, but here she's talking about, well, we don't know how well that home was constructed. What? All right. Um, well, that's because uh, in part, you know, there's so many different objectives to these uh, agendas that we have going here in our country. But one of the agendas is that you will have to... <clears throat> Uh, have your homes retrofitted to withstand flooding and tornadoes and it's going to be very costly to Americans but it will be forced upon you and if you can't afford the uh, the retrofits the uh, upgrades to your home to withstand weather that is actually created by man but you know, well, I guess most people just want to ignore that. But if you can't afford it, you will be hit with very heavy fines. And if you can't afford that, they're going to take your home. And that is coming. So what was I showing everybody? I was showing everybody the signatures that show you man is creating all of the tornadoes that are taking place right now, as well as, well, the uh, hail, 
but look at how fried is this with frequencies. Now, for those who don't know, let me just outline what I am looking at. And unfortunately, I have to keep this down a little. All right. What this is, this very defined circular line, it's a circular line. Well, you can extend that out, extend it 360, and you have what is referred to as a harp next rag ring. Frequencies coming from Doppler radar. You have one here, you have one here, and here, and this one is beginning, and they're intersecting with one another, and this is blasted with frequencies. So as you, and you can slow it down, I will um, link below to College of DuPage. You can slow it really slow, and you can see all of the high frequency heating taking place from the Doppler radar station. They are creating all of these tornadoes. Weather warfare, guys, that's what we are living. This is not a game. This is not crazy conspiracy theorists talking about weather warfare. Well, when you have people responding like that, they're just, they're still kind of, not even in seventh grade. They're in fifth grade. They're just ignorant, stupid little children. Yes, they walk around in adult bodies, but they are little children. This is so heavily concentrated with frequencies that I am not surprised that we have a tremendous amount of tornadoes taking place. All right. Um, and you can see it right on up to um, right through this entire storm. Let's take a, a look at Oklahoma. And here you go. Boom. Blasted. Blasted with frequencies. Slow it down. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, there. Look at look at what is happening here. You will not hear this from any mainstream media meteorologist, but this is what is taking place. Man is creating all of these extreme weather events. And when you look into it, you will find a tremendous amount of information. Look at all of the microwaves, all of the ripples in the red area. So they're using microwaves. They're using the high frequencies from Doppler radar, and they can emit these high frequencies into the ionosphere, and they come back as very low frequencies, extremely low frequencies, and they can create a tremendous amount of damage. This is going through the entire storm. Now, I do want to show you uh, the frequencies were, again, <laughs> last night. I mean, can anyone sleep anymore? These frequencies affect our ability to sleep. They affect our melatonin. Um, all right, so you see how this is being leveled off up here, up north. And then you get further up. Mm. Frequencies do this, not Mother Nature. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> this was it. There was no storm here. There was, there was hardly anything in Texas, nothing in Oklahoma. 
Uh, as you can see, no weather coming in from the west, but you've got these radar stations operating some very powerfully. And what were they doing? They were creating storms. Look at what was happening in Texas. That was it. They had the high frequency Doppler going. Doppler high frequency going. This was at uh, 217 a.m. So it was 1.17. 1 o'clock in the morning. That was Texas. Nada. Nothing. Well, guess what? They blew it up. They blew it up. And they got it going. And this is really pissing me off. A whole lot of people are suffering, guys. A whole lot of people are suffering. Now look at, ah, well, interesting. California, you're getting some precipitation. Because I was just here a little while ago, and there was nothing. There was nothing. So they're still talking about atmospheric rivers, two back-to-back, -back, coming in, dumping a whole lot of rain. Now look at, you have it so clear. Once you understand what is happening, you can see the signatures of the next uh, next red Doppler station at work, Northern California, and it just crops up right here, pops up. You can see the high frequency heating right here. Okay. Uh, um, the, I'm sorry, the extremely low frequencies being set off, I believe this is Eureka, California. Okay. Well, yeah, we are. All of this has ramped up, and it's not going to stop, guys. It's not going to stop a whole lot of Americans. You can add them to the list of the destroyed category. Destroyed. Life destroyed. And up here in uh, Kansas. Here they go, firing off. All of these defined circular lines, that is man creating all of the weather being brought to you. And they are loading this up for you. It's pretty intense. All of these frequencies intersecting with one another, that is very, that portends a lot of weather havoc, weather disturbance in your area. All right, so here live at least three tornadoes slam Texas, Oklahoma as line of severe storms eyes Dallas. And I hope to God my subscribers in this area are okay. Yeah, we've got damage. Um, This is Abilene, Texas. Okay, so tornadoes no longer, um, when they call these things tornadoes, and then you look at the pictures, and, well, something is amiss. Tornadoes, they take down whatever is in their path. We're not seeing that anymore. What we are seeing is, uh, well, this tree seems to be still standing uh, and other bushes, but the houses have damage. You don't see what we used to see. 
now in terms of tornado damage. There's not like that, you know, line of destruction. Hell in Spencer. That was the video I think I played last night. This storm suddenly erupted out of nowhere because I showed you at 2 o'clock in the morning nothing was happening in Texas and nothing coming in to Texas. So they created it. They created it. Now, look at the look at the frequencies, microwave frequencies at use. Can you see all of the ripples? And if you can't see it in my video, then click on the link below, and you will see all of the the very defined spacing of ripples in this precipitation, which means that they were also using microwaves. Not just the high frequencies from Doppler radar, but microwaves. And then you also have the extremely low frequencies that they can emit from Gwen towers. So, the, the, look, <laughs> you know, the, all of the cell phone towers all over the place, all of the Gwen towers all over the place. How many Doppler radar stations do we have? And Doppler radar, you can. You can think of Doppler radar as mini park stations. They're, we're, we're littered with them. We don't need all of this, and certainly not for, uh, you know, to talk to one another. You don't need cell phone towers littered in every community. The Gwen Towers, well, the, uh, the ground wave emergency network was decommissioned in the 70s, so why do we have Gwen Towers all over the place? Because they're using these. This is the infrastructure for weather modification. We don't need all of these Doppler radar stations, but we have them. This is not a natural tornado, but they are you know, they're the lying man, the lying, holy God, man, lying in this country. All right, well, I'm not going to play any of these videos because I'll probably get a copyright strike. Northern Plains Chasers. And I'm listening to this, and this, uh, I think this is the video with a couple who are chasing these storms. And they claim that this is a tornado. It is not a tornado. Not. Not. Then they see what, you know, appears. I mean, none of this is natural. None of it. Suddenly they have a very defined uh, funnel that is so wide. Now, tornadoes are generally thin. They're thin. But when they hit the ground and they move along the ground, they can produce an awful lot of destruction in a path, the path of the tornado. Not these, um, hey, well, a house here and a house there and all over the place. Um, so when you see these tornadoes that are like a mile wide, and that's what we were seeing in 2011, uh, so many tornadoes hitting the ground that it was a mile wide and it went on for like an hour, an hour and a half. That is not climate change. That is man creating a whole lot of destruction. Um, so, you know, no mile wide tornadoes and in 2011 what were they saying oh my god it's climate change that's creating these mile wide tornadoes give me a friggin break americans please flip on that switch that you know is down it's been down for years that thinking 
switch in your brain. Flip it up. Turn it on. Turn it on. All right. Oh, no, actually, this was it. Val Pastor. Um, you know, I want to play some of this, but I don't. <laughs> because I'll get a... I'll, I'll probably get a copyright strike because these people, they're sitting in their car and they're going along and they're claiming that this is a tornado. This. what It looks like this is a tornado. It, it, it's not even connected to, you know, anything above it. Just, it's whipping up the dirt. It's whipping up the dirt. That's what they're saying. So, massive winds come along. They're claiming this is a tornado. Please. Well, they can create, they can create destructive winds. And they did. So they're driving along and all of a sudden this tractor trailer flips over and they're claiming it's flipping over from a tornado. And it's not a tornado. Not a tornado. All right. I will link below to everything you can watch. All right. I'm playing this broadcast because it, it, well, all of the areas you know, the 40 million Americans who are threatened by these storms uh, listen to this, and I hope that everyone is safe in these areas. I'm John Dickerson. Forecasters warn the most intense storms of 2019 could hit the central U.S. this weekend and into next week. The dangerous weather is already beginning tonight. A tornado was reported a short time ago near Bakersfield, Texas. There are no initial reports of damage. More than 40 million Americans from Texas to the Great Lakes are bracing for a possible outbreak of tornadoes, hail, and damaging winds. Lonnie Quinn of WCBS-TV in New York is here with the details. Lonnie? Well, John, I believe it's going to be a really active weekend out there. Now, you talked about Texas this evening. It's going to be more Nebraska. You can see this, this red box showing you a tornado. Watch. Not a warning right now, but a watch for a good chunk of Nebraska. Now, this line is going to be pushing to the east-northeast. So, late tonight, places like Minneapolis, you could be experiencing severe weather. And then we kick off this weekend, and it could even start early Saturday morning. This is 5 a.m. Before the sun has even heated up the atmosphere, places like Oklahoma City to Dallas, you could already tap into severe, into severe weather. And as you go through the day, up and down the midsection of the country, and I'm talking really the Canadian border all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico could see severe weather. And this is an important time frame right here. 3 a.m. Sunday, a place like, well, St. Louis, for example. Folks are sleeping, and yet you could have some of your strongest weather of the weekend come through at that hour. Then we go into Sunday. Overall, Sunday is going to be a bit calmer. The yellow and yellows and oranges that you see in northern, uh, say, Michigan, that's going to be just heavy rain. What we look for, the outbreak of tornadoes. This evening, that tornado threat is Nebraska, South Dakota, and western Texas. Tomorrow, it's east Texas. It's Oklahoma and Arkansas. And then, John, I really think early next week could be stronger still. North Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas will be really where the bullseye is going to be focused. So uh, everybody's got to be on alert in that portion of the country. Let's, uh, let's go back to you. That's right. And these guys are smiling. My God. All right, the lawnmower is going. So this was posted last night, and um, I just want to show you the satellite that they had at 5 a.m. this morning. What did it show you? It showed you a very different picture than the storms that were actually occurring. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, very different than what actually occurred. Look at what's on College of DuPage now. This is what we should be seeing. This is Oklahoma. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's Kansas. And here. They're not showing that. They showed this line going up this way. Well, anyway, 
All right, so uh, tornadoes do not look like tornadoes anymore. And um, I will link below to all of these videos. This is Next Round Weather Control, How It Works, Turning Natural Storms into Biblical Floods, which we are living, and there's going to be more biblical floods coming to you in the next couple of days. And I'm going to play uh, not this one. This is uh, heat waves already. And all you need to know that it's temperature modification induced by man, how they can create heat. And, well, everybody walks around, oh, my God, I'm sweating. It's global warming. No, it's man. You see all this black crap that is in your atmosphere? Black carbon dust. Very cheap, inexpensive way to heat up the atmosphere very quickly. I'm going to play a few minutes of uh, retired Colonel Tom Bearden, Lieutenant Colonel Tom Bearden, scalar technology being used to control the weather. I hope that you listen to this video in full. Signatures in the sky, you can rest assured you're looking at weather engineering. Okay, to start with, I'm going to have to give you just a little preparation so that you understand in a, in a way what's being done and how it can be done. So let me start out with a, the very basic thing of what a scalar wave is. If you take two ordinary waves <clears throat> and you put them together 180 degrees out from each other, what you can result from that, what you can have when you get through with that, you can have a wave or a pulse in space-time itself. What you do is you squeeze space-time just like you'd squeeze a sponge rhythmically. But you do not create the normal kind of electric field and magnetic field in the wave that we normally have in our textbooks. If you do it correctly, <clears throat> you don't have to add just two waves. You could add ten. The thing is, as long as the vectors sum to zero, uh, very precisely, you have created a zero vector wave, and that makes it a scalar wave. Now, uh, vector wave for simple purposes, uh, for simple purposes, just look at it as if you were rhythmically squeezing a sponge and unsqueezing it. And what you're doing that to is space-time itself with this kind of wave. That's what it does. Now, <clears throat> that is really the original way that Tesla discovered uh, back uh, shortly before the turn of the century in his Colorado experiments. Mm -hmm. Now, this kind of way can be easily made in the laboratory, and it can be proven to exist, and you can use it. But I want to tell you a couple of things you can do with it. If I take uh, <clears throat> something like a pencil beam radar, something that transmits a very narrow beam, uh, and if I cross two of these beams, this kind of a wave can be used to do some things like influence the weather over an entire hemisphere. Okay, the way you would do this is as follows. Suppose I had two or more transmitters which were producing beams of the scalar wave energy I'm talking about, which the beams cross over North America. They all converge and cross over uh, the United States and uh, Canada. Okay, in the interference zone, you would see <clears throat> what looks like a, a standard wave interference pattern. You would see rows of waves crossing other rows of waves. Now, as a matter of fact, that exact pattern a friend of mine and I have seen here over Huntsville, Alabama, uh, running from north to south as far as the eye could see, the clouds were divided into absolutely even rows, as if you had a plowed field in the sky. And if you turned at right angles and looked in the other direction, from horizon to horizon, you have another series of what looked like absolutely even cloud rows. I have a series of photographs of that cloud structure over Los Angeles of last week. Good. Now, if that's the formation of the thing. Now, this particular phase of the weather uh, intervention over North America started, they started adjusting this stuff in shortly before the death of Brezhnev. You can listen to the remaining uh, 12 minutes of that video, and here is Dutch Sense explaining Nextrad Hawk Rings, and 
it's very real, guys. And look, when you see all of these Doppler radar stations, and you go to a sub-regional section, see this ring? See these rings all over? That means that these Doppler radar stations are emitting high frequencies into the ionosphere. Think of them as small, mini, mini harp stations. And then look at the extremely low frequencies that also bounce down from the ionosphere, which Dutch Sense explains. Dutch Sense here. 11.44 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, March 9th, 2016. And guys, for longtime viewers and new viewers, I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm having a good day and a good yesterday as well when we found the news that something that I caught flack on for multiple years has now been verified and experimented on by the U.S. military. And what I'm talking about here are the bullseye ring-shaped plasma rings that form off of high-power radio transmission, radio waves, and this is done at experiments up at HARP, confirmed by the Air Force Research Laboratories, showing the ring formation, explaining how it forms, why it forms, and that it's not just at HARP, it's any high-frequency pulse that is targeted. Now, high-frequency pulses occur from NETRAD radar stations in pulse mode. Normally, radar operates in the microwave band. So in the gigahertz, but it pulses in the megahertz bandwidth, which overlays and coincides with the same megahertz bandwidths that they've used at HARP and other high frequency facilities to generate these plasma rings. And this is visible. This is actually happening up in the upper ionosphere. And they describe it as an upside down top hat shape that reaches down from the ionosphere into the upper atmosphere or lower ionosphere. And, and that's, that's what we see here. Compare here of the harp rings from radar stations to the harp rings from harp. And these are smaller, of course, and they're less powerful. That's why we're not seeing actual visible plasma form off of this down here to the south at the radar stations. But the effect produces an actual wind rotation above the transmitter. There's actual excitement that happens. Particle exchange, electron cascade, storm formation. And, and we've documented this over and over again. For instance, Dover, Delaware on the East Coast, large radar pulse comes out of the Air Force base there. And several hours later, severe storms kick up. And the only spot to get an actual tornado warning is directly over the transmitter at the base. Just one of hundreds of examples. The US military has created multiple plasma spheres in the atmosphere. Observe those using radar. People, People said, said it was impossible to see this stuff on radar, and that the rings we were seeing were birds and bugs. That's what they said they were. You can go read the skeptic forums, huge forum, talking about how Dutch Sense is just seeing birds and bugs, that these are birds and bugs. Now we know it's not. The experiments were done to prove that rotation, wind rotation, forms above a transmitter. So this is already proved by MIT scientists that you can literally generate a vortex above a transmitter, and their idea is to generate tornadoes to produce power. Okay, so... All right, guys. Um, it's happening, all right? It's happening more frequently. And I will link below to everything. Uh, you know, you need to do quite a bit of research to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of people are just too immature, you know, to spend any time doing that. So that's why they call you these crazy conspiracy uh, theorists. And, well, you know, it's unfortunate that this is the condition of our American people, our fellow citizens, our fellow Americans. I hope everybody, I hope everybody remains safe. All of you remain safe. Some people have not remained safe just in the last 24 hours. They've had their homes destroyed.